Hi everyone, welcome to the Edu Avenue's TJ Test Prep YouTube channel. Through our YouTube videos, we hope students gain an understanding of how to approach and solve different types of problems seen on the TJ admissions exam. Even if you got the problem right, watch this video as you can learn helpful problem solving strategies that you can then apply to future problems. If you want to learn more about our services, please visit tjtestprep.com. And if you like this video, please leave a like and subscribe below. Today, we will be going over the real math science problem solving essay from the 2022 Makeup TJ admissions exam. Again, this is the actual essay prompt for the TJ Makeup admissions test, which was administered on February 4th, 2022. Before doing anything else, please watch the following videos to gain a better understanding of how half-life and carbon dating works. The links are in the description as well. If any of these terms look unfamiliar to you, you will likely need these videos before moving forward. Alpha decay, beta decay, half-life, radioactive elements, radioactive decay, radiometric dating, atomic particles. Now, on to the problem. So, the question that appeared on the 2022 makeup exam is as follows written on the slide. At this point, please pause the video now to first read the entire prompt and try and solve the problem before we go over it together. All right, before we solve this problem, we can begin by creating a framework. Step one is to set up a diagram to visualize the information. Step two, determine the steps to check for dating accuracy which is the other part of the problem. Third, we're going to discuss the underlying assumptions by which we solve this problem. And finally, we'll draw all of our final conclusions and clearly state what our final answer is. The first step, as with almost all TJ admissions exam problems, is to draw a diagram that can help us determine if the re remaining substance is a dinosaur bone. Most of the initial information in the prompt is completely irrelevant but we're given that one half-life of the carbon-14 bone is 5,730 years. We need to determine the number of half-lives passed, resulting in 1 16th of the carbon-14 bone remaining. This can be accomplished by starting with one whole substance and dividing by two for each half-life until we end up with 1 16th of the carbon-14 bone remaining. So in round one, we start with the entire initial substance and then we have, we, we go through a half-life, which is 5,730 years, and then we have half of that initial amount left. Then we go through another half-life, so another 5,730 years in round three, and we have half of the amount in round two remaining. So half of one half is one fourth. Um, so that, that would be one fourth of the, of the original substance. Then in round four, we go through another half-life. So there's one eighth of the initial substance remaining. And then same thing in round five, we go through another half-life and then we have you know, one sixteenth of the original substance remaining. So uh, this is just another uh, visualization of it with, with animation. So we go through the first half-life, we go through the second, the third, and then another half-life um, in round five. And that gives us, or gets us to one sixteenth of that initial substance remaining. And using all of this data, uh, we, can we can draw a diagram that can better help us visualize what's going on here. So, you know, as we move um, the proportion of the initial substance remaining from one to one sixteenth, we're constantly going through half lives, which are, you know, 5,730 years each. We have to go through four of those. And in total, that's 22,920 years uh, to get to one sixteenth of the initial substance remaining. And uh, what we want to do here is compare it. Uh, and we compare it against something that was given to us in the initial problem. So given that dinosaurs were extinct for 65 million years, uh, if we find a fossil that we think is only 22,920 years old, there's no way that fossil could possibly be a dinosaur bone. So this very clearly answers the first question that the remaining substance is most likely not a dinosaur bone because only 22,920 years or four half-lives have passed by the time 1 16th of the substance remains. Our second step, which is the second part of the problem, was to describe some ways that scientists could check their accuracy. So they want to make sure that uh, the number that they came up with was, was generally correct, that 22,920 number. Um, and so the, the scientists will first need to check for another 
radioisotope or radioactive isotopes of other elements present in the environment to see if they can use some other dating strategies um, for, for the first two that I'm going to describe. So if there was uranium present in the environment, uh, the scientists could use uranium thorium lead dating. And the key difference between carbon dating, which is what they were using, and this method, uranium dating, is that carbon dating uses radioactive isotopes of carbon, whereas uranium dating uses uranium, uh, a radioactive chemical element. The second strategy uh, is that the scientists could also use luminescence dating, where the minerals and rocks and sediments are buried, and then they become exposed to the radiation emitted by the sediments around them. The amount of luminescence signal tells scientists how long the object is buried. And so both of these require you know, some kind of previous knowledge in science, but there's a third option, um, that, which is what, what most students went with uh, in describing uh, how scientists might check their accuracy. And this is just as valid as, as the other two and actually a lot more simple. So um, you know, the, the third and, and final method is that uh, we could use relative dating. So uh, another you know, big way of understanding how old fossils are is understanding their relative positions in the ground. So the further down a fossil is into the ground, um, the, the older it is, because uh, it you know, kept getting buried um, under a lot of sediment. So uh, if we know the ages of a lot of the surrounding fossils, uh, then we can you know, pretty quickly uh, see if you know, this, this particular fossil that we're looking at falls within the general range. So relative dating is another great strategy that doesn't require um, a lot of background in science, just a little bit of critical thinking um, and thinking about how fossils work. So our third step uh, is to check our underlying assumptions. So every problem has a set of contextual elements that can be detailed a lot further. And these contextual elements may ultimately impact the results of the problem. And so we'll, we call these assumptions. And if you have some additional time at the end, you can detail these further as needed. Um, one example of an assumption would be that the 5,730 years figure for one half-life is exact. And there are um, you know, no other uh, confounding variables into that. So, that may lead to an inaccurate estimate of the number of years that it takes to get to 1 16th of, of the initial substance remaining. Uh, you know, for example, uh, one half-life could be maybe 10,000 years or it could be 15,000 years. And so that could put us very far off from that 22,920 figure that we originally had. Uh, another assumption is whether or not dinosaurs have truly been extinct for 65 million years. That's an estimate too, right? There might be dinosaurs that may have lived uh, shorter periods of time, uh, and you know, couldn't or possibly you know haven't been discovered yet. So there's like all of these kind of rely on estimates. And so if you have some additional time at the end, you want to describe that um, you know this problem was built off of a certain set of of assumptions and, and justify those assumptions. And so you know our fourth and and final step, uh, which is something that's pretty consistent across all of our TJ admissions problem, is that we're going to clearly state the final answer and we're going to put it in bold. So with 1 16th of the bones carbon 14, uh, like when, when 1 16th of the bones carbon 14 is remaining, we can conclude that the substance cannot be a dinosaur bone. So this is because only you know, approximately 23,000 years or four half-lives have passed by the time 1 16th of the substance remains. And that figure is not even close to 65 million years, uh, which is the, the figure mentioned from the prompt. So it can't possibly be uh, you know, a dinosaur bone. And scientists can use uranium thorium lead dating, or they can use uh, luminescence dating, or they can use relative dating to check for dating accuracy. And so that wraps up our solution for the 2022 makeup exam. And for similar solutions, practice prompts, complete instructional material on how to ace the TJ admissions process, uh, you can consider working with us. So um, a lot of our offerings can be found at tjtestrep.com, and that's for all TJ uh, admissions prep. Uh, we have small group coaching and a self-paced online course, as well as some one-on-one -on -one coaching. Uh, we had an 81% admissions rate to TJ as of uh, 2021. And uh, you can also check out our free admissions blog at tjtestprep.com slash blogs for special insights, tips, and tricks. If you're looking for you know, more generalized prep, like math, coding, college admissions, uh, you can look at our parent company, eduavenues.com. You can always send us an email at tjprep at eduavenues.com to learn a little bit more about our TJ prep offerings. And if you like this video, if it was helpful, please consider leaving a like, comment, or subscribe below.